Time now for Sid Sixero. This is where I get 60 seconds to talk about anything. Start the clock, please. Here's what's on my mind this morning. It remains one of the biggest disappointments I've ever had watching sports. It was an appointment to watch the game, and I was disappointed. And I live in Toronto. I've seen some gnarly stuff. But what happened to our Canadian men's soccer team in 2012 was unreal. They went to Honduras, hoping to reach the final stage of 2014 World Cup qualifying. They needed a solid performance. What happened was the complete opposite of that. Canada lost... 8-1. 8-1. Thing was over before it began. Each goal allowed more painful than the last. Any hope you had as a Canadian soccer fan was crushed in a violent way. For most of my life, supporting the men's national team has been that rough. But times have changed. Canada six games away from qualifying for this year's World Cup. And Thursday night, tomorrow night, they're back in Honduras. It's been 3,389 days since the massacre in San Pedro Sula. And as they say, revenge is a dish best served nine years after the fact. Sportsnet, tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern. L.A. LaRouge from Footy, Front, uh, Footy Prime, the podcast. English will come to me eventually here. James Sharman, one of the best in the business. Sharms, great to see you. Back in 2012, is, does that still <laughs> stick in your mind like me, Sharms? Oh, PTSD, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's still there. My, my therapist makes makes lots of money from me from that game specifically. Uh, it, it was a terrible, terrible night for, for football fans you know, in this country. It's been almost 10 years ago, October, I think it was, which is just crazy. But since then, you know, we've seen some good things happen, right? There's been a slow build. And then this, this tidal wave in recent months, a couple of years, say, of this team getting to a brand new point where... You know, you say revenge, and it will be to a certain degree, but Honduras isn't the same now that it was then. It's a team that, that's, you know, slumped at the bottom of the table. Um, it's not a very good side, but that means that they'll probably do whatever they have to to make it a miserable night for Canada tomorrow. Uh, Milan Borian, goaltender, he was part of that team. Uh, Atiba Hutchinson, Atiba specifically, you know, he, he was, he's been carrying this, this loss around since 2012. If you're... If you're him, like, what are your emotions going into that tomorrow night? Yeah, I mean, there's just three players, right, thankfully, from that night who are still, still feeling from it. And if you're Borjan in particular, it wasn't his fault, right? His yeah. team let him down that night. I mean, you can't blame the goalkeeper. The team just quit, uh, you know, in the first half, not even late in the game. They quit, and that's the embarrassing part, I think. But for, for Borjan, who, who's obviously built a nice career for himself since there, you know, rest our Belgrade, you know, he's got some, some demons, I guess, to, to exercise, so to speak, and there's every chance they will do it. I'll tell you this one thing said about this, this current team. They've been fantastic so far. They're in first place. You know, they should qualify for the World Cup, but we still haven't quite seen this group play on the road in this kind of environment just yet. Uh, and that'll be interesting. If they can get over this hump and then it's El Salvador, the third game, states in between then you've got panama and costa rica on the road in the next window tough games tough venues then i'll be a true believer but right now i still want to see this performance on the road in, in a horrible hostile environment here here by the way Sharman's proper pies where do we find them Sharman's proper.ca thanks pal best pies out there james Sharman, la larouche tomorrow night appreciate you man thank you very much